This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. A 70-year-old man is posted for cataract surgery. He has got fluid exfoliation, non-dilating pupil, and I'm expecting weak zonules. Plan is to stretch the pupil and then use BHEX device. Uh, let's see how things turn out. The incisions are created. The anticapsule is stained. I'm using cohesive OVD under the iris to just lift it up a little bit before I introduce my Y hooks. The idea is to create some space between the anticapsule and the iris so that inadvertent damage to the anticapsule can be minimized. Using two Y hooks, the pupil is being stretched. I typically do this in four quadrants. In this case, I'm very conscious that the stretching is not uh, extreme. It's just up to the mid periphery and then stopped. I don't want the pupil sphincter to tear. So there is a little bit of moderation in the stretching which I'm doing. This will ensure that the sphincter tear does not happen and the pupil will remain regular and round. Time to insert the BHEX ring. The globe is stabilized with my second instrument to the side port and the, the first two pair of notches are engaged onto the pupillary margin. The hands are switched. The final pair of the notches of the BX ring are engaged into the pupillary margin. So we have a decent opening of about 5.5 mm, which should suffice. As I try to puncture the capsule with the forceps, I can see the wrinkling of the anticapsule and its refusal to tear or puncture with the slightly blunt tipped forceps. So this is an evidence that the zonules are not very healthy. I go back with my sharp 26 number needle which punctures the capsule quite easily. The rexus is completed using the forceps. Decent sized 5mm rexus is achieved quite well. Hydrodissection is probably one of the most important steps in such eyes with uh, suspected weak zonules. So I always like to spend a couple of minutes more just to ensure that all the corticocapsular adhesions are broken. The first time after the hydrodissection, I'm not still sure that the, the corticocapsular adhesions are totally off. So it's repeated until I'm sure that the nucleus and the lens matter is totally free from the capsule attachment and it's confirmed by the nucleus rotation. Time to emulsify the nucleus. The tip is buried into the core of the nucleus and using a sharp chopper, vertical chop is used to create the first chop. Subsequently, the nucleus is divided into multiple smaller fragments and then each of these fragments is then emulsified in a controlled manner. The last fragment is uh, hiding under the pupil, it's just manipulated out and uh, eventually emulsified. Time to aspirate the cortex. I need to be a little bit careful because the cortex would be quite sticky in such eyes with weak zonules and there's every chance of uh, causing zonal adhesence during uh, cortex aspiration. I'm retracting the pupil with my irrigation handpiece just to have good visualization. I'm trying to use the tangential method of stripping the cortex. So this is one way of minimizing or catching of the anticapsule which can uh, increase the zonal adhesions. Uh, before implanting the lens, I would want to implant the CTR just to provide some degree of long-term stability to the back. The sins cube from my left hand is just supporting the ring as it is being threaded into the bag. A single piece hydrophobic intraocular lens is placed. 
The proximal haptic is gently maneuvered into the bag. Now is the time to remove the BX ring. First it's disengaged from the pupil and then pulled out quite easily. The lens is gently tipped up and using the irrigation handpiece, the OVD behind the lens is gently irrigated out. That's it, the case is done. And these are the post-op pictures. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.